In this video, we're going to prove the following theorem, which says that if you have a graph, G, and all of the vertices in the graph have degree at least two, which means that all of the vertices have at least two neighbors, then the graph contains a cycle. And when we say the graph contains something, we mean that this something exists as a subgraph in the graph G. So first of all, I just want to point out that we actually didn't specify whether or not G was a simple graph. And even though usually I want G to be a simple graph, I think it's very nice to just point out if G is not simple, if G is not simple, what happens? Well, then either, either we have a loop, either we have a loop, or a parallel edge. And a parallel edge is like a multiple edge that happened between the same pair of vertices. And a loop is an edge that goes between a vertex and itself. So these are the two examples. So this loop is in fact a cycle of length one. It's like the most trivial type of cycle. And this parallel edge is a cycle of length two but it's, again, a very trivial example. So this is what happens if G is not simple, and normally I don't want to consider those types of graphs anyways. But even if G was not simple, then it, we still have the conclusion. G contains a cycle. It's either one of these or these. So let's say now we assume that G is a simple graph. Assume G is a simple graph. And we need to prove this theorem for simple graphs. Okay, so we know that all the vertices in the graph have degree at least two, and what we want to show is that there is a cycle in the graph. So the most important part of this proof is to do the following step. We're going to let P be a longest path, a longest path in G, in the graph G. And you remember what a path is, it's just a sequence that goes from one vertex to another where in that sequence every pair of adjacent vertices in the sequence is in fact adjacent in this path. So let's call this path something v0, v1, v2 and it keeps going till some point vk minus 1 and finally ending in vk. Now this is a longest path in the graph. And the reason why we know that there is such a thing is because the graph is finite, so you cannot keep going on and on forever. There must be a longest path. It might not be unique, maybe there's more than one, but that doesn't matter. We're going to take P to be a longest path. So let's write this out. P is the path that goes from vertex V0, V1, V2, all the way up to Vk minus 1, Vk. All right. So, so far, all we've done is we've said we have a finite graph, so there is a longest path, and then we just drew it for our own sake. Now, let's take a look at this vertex right here, Vk. We know from the hypothesis of the theorem that every vertex has degree at least two. That means that every vertex has at least two neighbors. So, we know that there must be some other neighbor other than Vk minus one when you look at this vertex vk. There must be some other vertex v that is adjacent to vk. So since the degree of vk, in fact all the vertices have degree at least two, but since this has degree at least two, there is a vertex v which is in the graph so that V is not the other neighbor, not Vk minus 1, some new vertex V that is adjacent, is adjacent to vertex Vk. So now we might be thinking, well, maybe this vertex doesn't belong to this path. Maybe it's on its own out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to show that that's not the case by doing the following. If V does not lie on P, does not belong to the path P. In other words, 
V is none of these other vertices, V0, V1, or any of these guys, all the way up to Vk minus 2. If that vertex is truly different from the rest of the path, then we have a longer path. a longer path in the graph. Namely, let's call this path P prime. It's the path that goes from V0, V1, all the way up to Vk minus 1, Vk, and then to V. And that is a longer path. But this is impossible. But this is impossible since P is a longest path. All right, well, this part is impossible then. It's not possible that V does not belong to the path. So this little picture that I drew up here where V was away from the path, that cannot happen. What must happen is that V is one of these vertices from the path. It's not VK minus 1. It's got to be some other vertex, but it must belong to the path. So then V must be one of the vertices of path P, path P, but of course other than Vk minus 1, other than Vk minus 1. So V must equal Vi for some I where 0 could be less than or equal to I, less than or equal to K minus 2. So that's what we've got up here. For some VI, that's where the vertex V actually lies. So this is where the edge is. Well, what's just happened? Let's look carefully. Isn't there a cycle? We have this path that goes from VI all the way through to VK, and then we know this is an edge. Remember, this was the case that was impossible. So we've just seen that there is a cycle, and let's write that part down. So then, this is the cycle. It goes from VI to VI plus 1, and you keep going until you get to VK minus 1 and then VK, and don't forget that this notation means VK is also adjacent to VI, and that is a cycle in the graph. So we've just done exactly what we set out to do. As long as the degree of every vertex in the graph is at least 2, then there is a cycle in that graph.